a controlled shot here. We're stump shooting, we're on our way back. You can see that clump right there in the road. It's about 18 yards, 15, 18 yards from us, but watch controlled. No shaking, solid. And I drilled it, okay, just like that. That's perfect. That's not what happens very often on live animals. You don't get that kind of control due to buck fever. Let's. All right, hey guys, Jason Samkoviak here. Today we're gonna to be talking about buck fever and what it does for you. Um, as you saw here in the intro, what a controlled shot is, when you have that control, when we're practicing in our yards, when we're set up in our own safe, secure environments, it's very easy for us to get that, to come in, to lock, to push, to hold, to get everything set, to go through your mantra, to make sure your release is smooth and doesn't pluck, and go through all this kind of stuff is perfect. One thing I notice, I hear a lot of people say um, this year, last year, that uh, a lot of people that are shooting at hogs, shooting at other animals, uh, shooting at deer, I'm watching their videos and I'm hearing them say, um, you know, uh, well, the hit was a little bit back, but at least I got to full anchor. At least I got to hear. At least I did a full follow through. Okay, so they keep talking about that stuff. Why is that? Okay, why why would it be any different than any other kind of scenario? Um, or if you're in my Patreon course and you watch all these animals, I mean, you've seen me shoot at dozens of animals. Um, a lot of them end up in the freezer and some of them don't, but you've seen me shoot at dozens of animals in my, my Patreon course or Patreon uh, channel where it's all that vlog footage. All those things that happen, um, you can, you know, you see the differences versus the controlled shot that I just did in the beginning of this where we were stump shooting our way back to the truck here. We just got done hunting. It's noon, and uh, we've been out here in the morning, saw, got into two hogs two different times, two single hogs two different times a mile apart, and saw a beautiful uh, cottonmouth this morning. But where, where, when I did that control shot, we were just walking up the road, shooting at a little clump in the road. It was very easy, it's very controlled, it's very natural cut type scenario. When we're shooting at a live animal, we have movement to consider, we're worried about getting busted, our draw is usually a little bit slower. There's so many things, but it's not uncommon um, for us to have when you'll notice, in, like I said, I'll, I'll put a couple of examples in here maybe for you at the end of this here um, to show you. Just I'm not going to show you the shots. I'm not going to show you that stuff because of YouTube rules and because that stuff is part of my Patreon. you got to be a member of my Patreon to see my full hunts. But I might show you a little bit of the, the draw set there where you can see it. But when I'm controlled and I come in there, even sitting down here, but when I come in and draw, I mean, I come in and I get locked and I am controlled. Okay, that is very controlled. Now, when you see that happen in these videos on those hunts, you'll see it more like this. Okay, you'll see a little more, you know, I can't even fake it, okay, but it's a little more shakiness to me. Why? Because I suffer from buck fever tremendously on almost every single animal I shoot at. Um, things go out the window, like this one I'm going to show you. Maybe I'll throw it in right here. This one, I don't even know what happened. I'm an instinctive bow hunter, okay? So I don't aim, I don't measure gap distances. <coughs> I don't any of that. I look at where I want to hit, and then I shoot at that. Well, this hog here, he comes in, and he starts to he busts me as I, start, as I just start to dry. He kind of catches something out of the corner of his eye. He waits. So I wait. Then as he starts walking, I come in and draw, and I'm going to lead him, and I'm leading him. Then a branch gets in my way, and i got to bend down low and get down low, and I do all this stuff. And in all that process, I just stopped watching my spot I want to hit, and I started focusing on that whole hog. Buck fever takes over. I let go of that shot thinking it was perfect. I'm looking right where I want to hit, but my body's not lined up with me. I'm, not, I'm, I'm like shooting here, but looking here. And you see that arrow just completely bomb out. You know, you don't see it, but it did. <laughs> so, um, 
but buck fever is a reality for every single one of us in some form or another. Uh, with all the animals I've taken, I still get it all the time. I mean, I have missed more animals at 10 yards than probably anybody who walks this planet. I have missed more at 10 yards than I bet anybody else has. And it is pure buck fever. And I can shank it. I can come in and have them right here and think it's great and I dump my bone. What, what just happened? Or go to release and I won't let go and I do this and it's I, I, all kinds of things fall apart with buck fever, okay? And it, we call it buck fever because it's just the jitters for a lot of people, but for a lot of us, it's actually more than buck fever. It's live ag animal target panic is what it is. And it suffers, a lot of people suffer from it. I've watched some amazing hunters shank some really easy shots. It is part of the reality and I don't believe there's any way to get through it. John Tucker, <coughs> to try and get his heart rate and his adrenaline up when we would be on 3D shoots, before he'd shoot a target, he'd drop down, do 50 push-ups and jump a jacks as quick as he can. And then he'd get up and he'd grab his bow and he'd whoosh, try and shoot real fast to get that adrenaline up to try and recreate that. You can't recreate it. He figured it out pretty quick. There's no way to recreate that sense of emotion of taking a live animal. Uh, some people say that as you kill more, it gets easier. For me, it never has. I'm glad it never has. I really enjoy that factor of it. I like... Um, I live for that weak knees and that that shake to it and that oh guys this is real this year's gonna happen and everything comes I, I love that I love that um, fortunately though for me it's either I'm dead on perfect shots or I, I miss by a mile that's usually how it works for me so I'm real happy um, when it hits me it hits me big and I throw big okay um, usually if I'm beating it or I'm in control of it somewhat then I'm spot on uh, but like I said I don't usually pull it just a little bit usually I am spot on or I dump it by a mile um, like you've seen in this one I just showed you so it hits everybody a little different but buck fever or live animal target panic is 100% a real thing uh, the only way you can help to get better at it is to keep shooting more animals. Okay, that's why, uh, you know, when you're, you're starting out at this stuff, we tell everybody, we're like, you know, shoot anything that walks by. If it's brown, it's down. Uh, go out and shoot a bunch of carp bow fishing and go out and uh, small game hunt for squirrels and all this stuff because it helps you tremendously. That live animal aspect, that having a broadhead out here on the end of your arrow and what that looks like in your field of view here. Let me get my knock set. What that's going to look like for you in that field of view and how that's going to be, that's a whole different world than most people that are target shooters or have only been target shooting can ever understand. So the only way to prepare for it is to get out and shoot live animals, okay? And then again, <clears throat> even when you do, don't feel bad if you don't overcome it. Don't feel bad if you don't have that, you know, that ice cool calmness to you when it comes time to shoot a live animal. Many of us do not, and I've killed a whole bunch. I mean, I've killed handfuls and handfuls and handfuls and handfuls of animals. I have also equally missed as many animals as I've killed. I think I'm somewhere right in that 170 range for whitetails alone. And I promise you that I've missed well over 100. Um, reality is what it is. Whether people will tell you or not, it's, it's to each your own. Now, some people, such as, uh, you know, my buddy Joe has maybe only killed 40 deer in his entire life. But uh, out of those 40, you know, he's killed 40 deer, but he's probably only missed six in his whole life maybe seven he's got that ice cold veins that smooth consistent control i own this here it is your mind foomp, done where i get this oh come on please let the shit there it is oh right there there it is and it, it comes apart it's just part of who i am and my nature and how it is um you know i was the same way when i was a high school kid and fought i used to get into a lot of fights i was suspended from sixth grade for suspended for 82 days which made me fail uh but suspended 82 days for fighting in sixth grade uh never being a bully always going up against bullies uh going up against people that would uh pick on a girl that was there pinch her butt i was just uh kind of that guy i guess and uh, always looking for a fight but even then um, you know, I would, before I, I knew I was going to go punch this kid and do stuff, but I would always get that fever would hit and I would get freaked out and I'd go, I'd, I'd work my way through it, but it never fails. Okay. It happens to me all the time. You just can't beat it. And a lot of people are like that. There is no way to actually completely rid yourself of buck fever. There is no way to actually get good at shooting through it other than shooting at live animals. And then I will tell you this too, um, when I'm in a stand for deer, it's a little easier because I'm a little more controlled and I'm a little more hidden and I'm up there a little higher. 
when I'm out here hunting pigs, they're moving through things. Windows are opening and closing instantly. It's really tricky. There's multiple eyes there. I'm on, I'm, I'm on the ground. I'm in the open. It, it's a lot more complicated. Um, but in those scenarios, I get a lot more buck fever than I do when I'm in a stand. When I'm in a stand, you will, if you're again, if you're my Patreon channel, you know there's times that I'll come in and draw and I won't even shoot right away. I'll come in, I'll take that arrow. And that deer might be here and, and he's not moving. Let's say he's right down here and he's at he's at eight yards and he's eating acorns and he'll come in, he'll start eating those acorns, give me that shot. You see this on my channel. I come in and I go, okay, and I should be shooting. Nope, not yet. I'm gonna hold. There it is. And I give myself that little bit of extra time to make sure I am locked in, to make sure that I have that control, to take that breath, to convince me that, okay, I can beat this. We're, we know the situation. The fear is over. Now dive in and get it. You know, come on and get it. Just like uh, I use the example to myself a lot in my head, and I, I kind of do the whole in my mind. I go, whoo, 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 like that kind of thing. I don't obviously do it, but that's how I see it is uh, from one of the, I don't remember which Iron Man it is, but where his buddy, um, the, the general, um, the black guy, and he takes one of uh, Tony's suits and then he's in it and then that guy's burning him out of his suit and they're heating him up and they're cooking it. It's like Iron Man 2 or something, but they're like heating his suit and it's, he's got, he has no choice but to come out and he's like, hey, okay, here we go. <laughs> Boom. And he comes out fighting. You know, it's that kind of thing. Same kind of concept. That's what I see in my head for that. I, I need to control myself to control that buck fever as best I can. And like I said, I'm not going to lie. 30 years of bow hunting, it still gets the best of me most of the time. I bet realistically I can control it 40% of the time. The other 60%, it wins for, it beats it beats me. So what do we do? How do we how do we fix that? How do we solve that? How do we get better odds? What do we do if that's a scenario? Two simple rules. Hunt close and take the opportunity to calm yourself when you can. That's it. That's all there is to it. That's the only thing I can do. And understand that you are going to miss. I do believe the fortunate aspect is, though, when you fall apart from buck fever, you are not missing by judgment where you're off by this far and you just gut shot an animal rather than hit it behind a shoulder. Uh, or that you missed, you know, you, you spined it. Yeah, I don't think that happens. I've only spined two animals in my entire life, ever. Um, I, again, I'm either dead on or I'm way off is how it is. And so, like I said, if I'm on and I can get control of that, it's there. If I can't, it's like that. And it's just mess. And the arrow goes wherever it wants to. But if we keep our shots close inside of 20 yards, okay, um, keep them in nice and tight, especially on deer. When, keep them as close as you can to get them there where if something does go wrong, you got better odds of it's pulling together for you. And then the other thing too is wait until they're calmed down until you, or until you can calm yourself down. So you come in, if you have the time, if he is picking acorns and you got a minute um, coming in and you can take that time, come in to draw, even John will do this too. He's been busted a couple times to it too, but John does it. You, I have tons of footage of John. I don't have the permissions for him to show that stuff. That's his personal video. So I can't, but he'll come, you'll see him and I'll be uh, 100 yards away filming him and I'm in a different spot but deer will come in and you'll see him do this Boom. like that that's how he'll go and what that is is that is him getting over that panic that fever he's coming in he's like yeah, okay but he's not going to drop he's not going all the way down and doing all this but he's taking it here giving himself a little breather where it's comfortable to hold he'll do it again because he doesn't quite feel it and he'll do it there and then now he's like, okay, here we go. I got this. Then I'll come back, boom, and drill that deer and do it perfectly. There are ways to combat this. I do not believe there are ways to ever get rid of it or beat it. It's like target panic for a lot of people. They Really? Really? There's a hog that just went across the road. He literally went across the road. He's got to be 200 yards up there. But I literally just seen a hog go right across the road. Go cool figure. Um... But uh, so, it, but he will, you know, like I said, you can't always beat target panic. There's just no, no possible way to always do it. Um, and, and I believe buck fever is the same way or uh, live animal target panic is how I prefer to call it. Cause it doesn't just happen with bucks. I've had it happen on button bucks. I've had it happen on porcupines in a tree um, with buddies out there. And you know, a porcupines on there and he's 10 feet up on a limb and I go to shoot at it. My arrow is now this far off stuck in a tree with a broadhead gone forever. And they're laughing and be going, how did you do that? 
that. I can, oh, I can screw up. Believe me, I can screw up more than anybody else could ever imagine. Um, I have, and I'm not afraid to share it to you and tell you. Like I said, I have missed over a hundred deer with an arrow, with a, with, a, with a traditional bow. Promise you, more than a hundred. And it is because of this. There is no shame in it. There is no fault to it. There is no problems with it. Uh, you do the best you can to kind of beat it. But it is, it is what it is. Grasp it. Enjoy it. Um, thrive in the feeling of it because it's a beautiful thing. I almost feel bad for people that don't get it anymore. And to them, it's just, they're like, oh, it's just a doe. Watch this. And they kill it like it's no big deal. And it, but there's no emotion to it. There's no excitement. There, that I, I've never lost that. I love that, and I'm glad I have it, and I hope I still never lose. If I ever lost that, I would probably stop hunting because I need it. Um, you know, I get the same way on a, literally on a button buck or a little 60 pound hog as I do if it was a 140 inch buck. I, I don't care. It's the same exact emotion overflow that happens to me. And I will shank an arrow on both of them equally the same way because of that, uh, that, um, live animal target panic. So something for you to think about, find a way to try and do your best with it, practice through it. But the main thing you can do to beat it, keep your shots close and try to calm yourself if the animal gives you time. If he's coming by and you got a bleat to stop him, you know, you come in, you draw, ah, that's all you got. You, you don't have a choice. This is happening like that. This is game on. But if he's coming through and like I said, he's picking acorns or uh, he, he comes in, stops here and he's standing and he's looking over his shoulder the other way and he's peeking over that way and you can draw. Don't just, you know, there, like that. Bring it back and, okay, all right. Control the shot as best you can. So there you go. Little tip for you. Thanks for watching.